Hello, welcome to week three, unit five, important functions and methods for complex data types. In the previous units, you've learned about different complex data types like lists, tuples, and dictionaries. We have seen that these complex data types differ, so they have different properties. And as a result of these different properties, tuples, dictionaries, and lists offer different functions and methods that can be used together with them. In this slide, I've given a short overview of some of the methods and some of the functions and if they are applicable to lists, tuples, or dictionaries. I will not explain these functions right here on the slide. Instead, this is just an overview. We will now switch over to our Jupyter Notebook again, and I'll explain some of these functions in the Jupyter Notebook. Here we are in our Jupyter Notebook, and similar to the slides, I have created a table in this Jupyter Notebook, and this table shows you which methods, that's the upper part, and which functions are available, and using small axes I indicated if they are applicable to lists, tuples, or dictionaries. So let's go to through them. For example, we start with the methods. The first method is the sort method. The sort method is only applicable for a list, and it sorts a list. Obviously, a tuple can't be changed. It's immutable, therefore we can't use the sort method with a tuple. And in dictionary, um, in a dictionary, we have key value elements. There is no defined sort order, so it's also not applicable to a dictionary. Using append, we can append elements to a list, so that doesn't make sense for tuples and dictionary as well. There's a method pop, which we can use to remove items from a list or a dictionary. When we use it for a list, we would provide an index. When we use it for a dictionary, we would provide a key. There's insert, which can be used to insert elements into lists and also a remove method that can be used to remove elements from a list. It should be pretty clear that all these methods won't work for tuples because a tuple is immutable and only one of them, namely the pop, works for a dictionary. But there are other useful methods. For example, count. Using a count, you can count the number of occurrences of the element x, so the parameter x, in a list or a tuple. You can also get the index of a parameter in a list or a tuple. Again, this doesn't make sense for a dictionary. Instead, dictionary have special methods like keys, values, or items to return the keys of a dictionary, the values of a dictionary, or all the items. I have shown you these three methods already in the unit about dictionaries. Let's have a look at some of the functions that are important. For example, using delete, we can remove elements from either a list, uh, let me scroll this up, either a list or a dictionary, a tuple is not changeable, therefore it's not applicable to a tuple. For all the elements, we can use the length function, which returns length, so the length of a list, the length of a tuple, or the length of the key set in the case of a dictionary. For lists and tuples, we can use min and max to return the smallest or the largest element in the list or the tuple. Of course, this requires that the elements are comparable. So if you have a list containing strings, numbers, floating points, and Boolean values, min and max won't work because you can't compare them. And finally, there is a sorted function which returns a new object, a new list, or a new tuple, which is, contains the sorted you know, elements of the list or the tuple that was provided as a parameter. And that's also just to remind you the big difference between the method sort, which sorts the list itself, and the sorted function, which returns a new list or a new tuple 
um, just in a sorted order. So now I've introduced briefly some of the methods and some of the functions that are available for lists, tuples, and dictionaries. Um, we won't try out all of them in this unit in the following example. I encourage you to stop the video, try to open our own cell in the notebook and play around with the different methods and functions to see what they do and get a feeling for them. Additionally, it also makes sense to, for example, jump to the Python documentation for dictionaries and to have a look to scroll through it and see what functions and what methods are available for, for example, a dictionary or for a tuple. We now won't read through the documentation together. Instead, I prepare a small example. And this small example is meant to show you the functionality of a few of the methods and functions we just learned about. What is this example about? In this example, I have a text. This text is a famous lorem ipsum text. And I have the letters, which contains just all the letters from A to C. And what I tried to do in this example, I try to find out which letter occurs most frequently in this text. If you're a Python professional, you would use a different approach than the one I'm going to show you. There is, for example, a counter in the standard library. But we don't know about using libraries right now, so we build this functionality ourselves. And there are also different approaches. Probably a better approach would be to use a dictionary. But right now, I just want to show you different methods for lists um, and how to use them. So, as said, it's a little bit artificial, but yeah, bear with me for the time being. So how do we count how many times a letter occurs in a text? Remember count? There was this function count. We can use the function count, I'll scroll back up here, to count the number of occurrences of x in a list, a tuple, or in our case, a string. Because remember, string is also a sequence type similar to list and tuple. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I create a new list, which is called result. For each and every of the letters in our alphabet, I count the number of the occurrences of these letters in the text. And the result, the number of occurrences I append to our result list. So let's try this out. I'll add a print statement here to output the result. And I'll comment this out for the time being. And execute the program. And we now see for each and every of the letters, number of times they occur in the text. So for example, the A, the first letter in our alphabet, occurs 15 times in this text. The B occurs two times, and so on and so on. And if you scan through this list, you will know that 23 is the occurrence of the letter that occurs the most frequent number of times. And luckily, we have the max function, we can use the max function to get the maximum value from a list. So let's try this as well. Print the maximum value in the result is. And we use our max count here. And if we execute the program again, nicely, the max function returns the max count, which is 23. <clears throat> There's another function, the index. The index gives us the first index of a certain value in a list or a tuple. And we can use this to get the index of the 23 in our result list. So the in 
the index of the value. Here we add our max value, uh, the max count. In the result is, and here we add now the max index. Let's execute this. So the index of 23 in the result is eight. We could check this. Remember, we start counting at zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Indeed, the index method returns the correct number. So what can we do with this number? We can use this to look up which letter occurs most frequently in our text. And we do this by simply reading our letters with the corresponding index. So let's return this. The letter occurring most frequently is. The letter occurring most frequently is I. So the letter that occurs most frequently in our text is the letter I. Why does this work? This works because we go through the letters one by one and append the count to our result list. So we know the count, the, the first element is a count of the A, the second element is a count of the B, and so on. So once we get the index of the element which occurs most frequently, we can use the letters variable again to look up which letter it is, and that's in our case SCI. So that's a small example of applying different functions or methods, in this case to a list. So what have we used here? We have used the count method, we have used the max function, we have used the index method, and we have then used the common index access you've already used yourself quite a number of times. So just to stress this once again, this example was to show you the applicability of the different methods. Um, there are better ways to count the number of occurrences of the letters in the text. Um, we will see them later on in this course. So let's switch back to our slides. What have you learned in this unit? In this unit, I have given you an overview of some common methods, functions for lists, tuples, and dictionaries. I've shown you that you can find more information in the documentation, and I want to encourage you once again to have a look at the documentation once in a while to see what functionality is present. And I've also described why not all of these methods are available for all of the complex data types. The most important reason being immutability, for example, for a tuple, and therefore we can't delete elements or add elements to it. Thanks for watching and see you in one of the upcoming units.